and he worked in our group, but now he's starting the PhD program in University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. He is excellent in drawing figures and he'll give us some introduction about how do you make great figures. Xingwu, please uh, go ahead. Yes, thank you so much uh, for the kind introduction. Yeah, so I'm really, really uh, excited to have this opportunity to share some of my experiences in using PowerPoint uh, to create scientific uh, schematics. So I, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming everyone can hear me, okay. Okay, so uh, before I start uh, today's uh, seminar, I want uh, to uh, briefly introduce the Tarasaki Institute uh, because uh, they organize this uh, uh, activity and uh, by inheriting the Tarasaki legacy, uh, the organ transplantation is actually one of the first applications of personalized uh, medicine. So nowadays, uh, we have this, uh, the future healthcare trend is to individualize and personalize the wellness and the cures. So the mission of Tarasaki Institute now, uh, led by Dr. Ali, is to continuously invent and foster practical solutions that can further improve and enhance the health of individuals. So the Tarasaki Institute now have expanded to uh, three locations in Los Angeles with world-class uh, facilities and outstanding researchers from, the all, from all over the world um, uh, with uh, uh, continuously pursuing the vision of this personalized uh, medicine. So yeah, so do follow the Tarasaki Institute in multiple social networks. And also if you are interested, uh, you can always check the previous Fireside uh, chat series uh, in the link here. So yeah, so uh, let's start today's uh, talk. So before I sharing any techniques, I wanted to show you uh, some sample figures that I recently uh, adapted uh, from, the, uh, from other journal articles that I read. I just, in case. So is this a specific problem that's, okay. Yeah, because the, the slide that I need to draw something, so I have to use this so that I can, so that I can actually, uh, so that I can actually uh, share how I specifically draw this. So I have to use this non-full screen format. Yeah. Shibu, can you make your slides full screen? Yeah, because uh, I need to draw something afterwards. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, so I wanna share some of these uh, images that I recently copy pasted uh, from the uh, from the journal articles that I read, and the reason that I recommend you to do so to do so uh, first, they can serve as references uh, and inspiration uh, when you are creating your own schematics. Uh, you can always refer to their style, their color choice, and how they are coordinating uh, every um, every uh, shape together, uh, every components together, and uh, as an individual, um, as a beginner of creating scientific schematics, uh, you can always, uh, by mimicking their style, you can start uh, building up your style uh, of creating scientific schematics gradually. So this is one specific example uh, figure that I recently created uh, using the PowerPoint. And the reason that I recommend using the PowerPoint is because it's such a simple uh, and basic software that every computer uh, basically has it. And because it's very simple, and I feel I have a higher control uh, in using this uh, PowerPoint instead of other advanced software uh, that I may have less control of, even though they have, even though they have sophisticated uh, functions. So I believe the techniques that I'm gonna share today will be transferable uh, to whatever software that you are gonna, uh, you are familiar with. And I feel uh, today's talk should really be inspirational uh, instead of me telling you straight uh, to uh, how to create a scientific schematics uh, in a standard way. So for today's talk, uh, first I will go over some basics uh, in how to uh, add shape, how to add color and effect. And then I will go through some specific examples, for example, how to create a cells, uh, a virus, uh, etc. cetera. And lastly, I will discuss some caveats uh, in terms of coordinating uh, everything together. So 
Yeah, so the very first thing that when you are creating a schematics uh, is to have the, uh, is to create a shape. So I commonly divide the shape into regular shapes and irregular shapes. So for the regular shapes, you can always find them uh, in this insert panel. So uh, in, in this insert menu that you can find the shapes and you can find uh, all kinds of very regular shapes in terms of uh, uh, including the triangles, circles, uh, polygons, um, etc. So after you select, uh, uh, after you select a, a, a regular shape, you can always double click and you can change uh, the fill of it, the line of it. Uh, you can make it no line. You can make it the solid line. You can change the thickness of the line, and you can make the color different. Um, so this, and also you can change the fill of it. You can make it gradient fill. Uh, so I will talk about this uh, later on. So for the regular shapes, although it may seem that it's just to the rectangles or triangles, but actually they have uh, thousands of possibilities when you're combining them together. For example, here I have uh, uh, circles in uh, blue color and the triangles uh, in white color. So I commonly talk uh, these triangles like the um, blockers because they are the same color as the background. So here I have the white background and I have white color triangles. So when you do this, it gives you the uh, feeling that this is another. So when you do all kinds of uh, combinations, you can create different irregular shape from the combination of the regular shapes. So there is another powerful, very, very powerful function that I uh, like to introduce is the Boolean functions. So for example, if you have a shape A and you have the shape B, so what you can do is you can actually say like shape A and shape B. And in this shape format, uh, in this shape format menu, we have these two circles uh, intersecting each other function. So this gives you a series of Boolean functions that you can do to the shapes. For example, if I do the subtract, you can actually create a, a new figure, a new component that's irregular uh, you do uh, when you're doing the shape A minus shape B. So they have a other kinds of, uh, you can do the union, you can do the intersecting, you can do all kinds of Boolean functions to different shapes so that you can create uh, uh, thousands possibility of other irregular shapes. So the other shape that I wanted to introduce is this irregular shape uh, in curvy, the, this curvy structured irregular shapes. So the, this is the most, one of the most functions that I also use. So it's the similar, uh, similarly it, they are, in this insert manual. So in the shape panel, uh, in the shape panel, we have this hill-like curve. So this functions, when you're drawing, um, uh, they are actually connecting uh, each dots uh, in a curved uh, structure. So this is actually really, really uh, powerful uh, in creating, for example, cells, because most of the cells uh, are actually, um, for example, immune cells are actually irregular curve uh, curve structure. So you can actually uh, use these tools, but this tool requires some practice because you have to be familiar with how they are uh, creating this uh, curve. And similarly, you can change, uh, you can, uh, by double clicking it, you can change the feel of it and the line of it, uh, which are very, very uh, basic. Um, uh, features of the shape. And when you are not drawing two ends together, you can get a curved line instead of a shape. And for example, this can be useful for the genetic material. Yeah, so this basically uh, how you can create some basic shapes. So after you have some shape, you have to uh, have uh, select the right color. So for me, I feel the color is really uh, the most, most important uh, thing in creating a scientific schematics. Uh, the reason is, for example, for the shape, you cannot, you do not have much playing ground there uh, because um, the, uh, for example, the cells, uh, it cannot be a uh, triangles or uh, rectangles cells. However, the color, you can be really, really creative, but that's also the place that people can constantly make mistakes. So for example, I have this two set of shape that is really have the same shape and effect and everything, but they're just in different color. And you can notice that uh, personally, I prefer this uh, set of color combination uh, instead over uh, this one. So for the color, you really need to uh, practice. Uh, and the one suggestions uh, or recommendations is to prepare some uh, color panel or color palette uh, in some journal articles you are reading. So for example, this is an example 
uh, color palette that I recently uh, used. Um, because this color are uh, actually sophisticated designed, they are in right resolution, uh, in right uh, brightness. So yeah, so definitely uh, prepare some color panels that so that you can pick up the color um, uh, uh, they have previously designed. So because in this uh, PowerPoint, they can they actually have this they actually have this function that you can um, you can um, for example here. Uh, in this color panel, you can actually uh, click on this more color, and here they have the small syringes that you can uh, you can constantly uh, just pick up the color you like, and then uh, the color will uh, immediately change, and this color will uh, save to your recent colors, so that you can use all this uh, colors that you like instead of some default color the PowerPoint has, which is maybe not as good designed uh, as the the color palette. Yeah, so after you have some, uh, after you have the shape and you have the color to it, and uh, one way to make your uh, schematics more dynamic and more live is to add some effect. So here I want to introduce three effects that I frequently use, and um, they are color gradient, soft edges, and shadow. So for the color gradient, so when you double click uh, the Yeah, so maybe let's have a new shape. Yeah, so for a new shape, uh, instead of, so for the line, you can change the line and for the fill, you can also change uh, to be a different colored fill and you can change the thickness of the line. So for the gradient, it's actually in this gradient fill. So for the gradient fill, so when you click on the gradient fill, you will have um, this panel that you can change the gradient features. For example, you can change how many uh, gradient stops you want. So for example, here I have two stops and you can change the color to be different. And uh, you can also change the uh, type of the gradient. For example, you can make it to be linear and you can change the uh, angle uh, of this gradient and you can change the direction of it. So for me, for the rect for the circles, I personally like the radial uh, radial uh, gradient uh, with the inner side and outer side uh, outer side to be a different color. So this um, so you can always change the feature of your gradient uh, here as well. So the soft edges uh, is uh, in this uh, second panel. So it's polygon shaped um, panel. So here we have uh, several different uh, functions. So the soft edges um, is here that when you are adding the when you are adding the soft edges uh, feature, uh, you can start noticing that uh, the edge of your shape is getting blurry and blurry. So this is how um, uh, how soft edges is working. So for the shadow, uh, it's uh, for example for this line, um, the shadow is uh, in the same um, this polygon shaped panel. So you can change. Uh, the shadow, you can change the color of the shadow. For example, you can change the color of the shadow uh, to be um, to be whatever color that you like. And also you can change the uh, size of the this shadow. And you can add the blurness uh, of your shadow. And when you have this, uh, you can also create the distance of this shadow and then adjust, uh, and adjust to their angles to a different location that you like. So what does this fun feature do is it's like the light is coming from uh, this direction. You have a shadow um, uh, on the background. So yeah, so this is really the most three uh, uh, feature that I commonly use. And I believe uh, after you know these three functions, you will be able to create the uh, schematics in a better way. <clears throat> yeah, so next I will talk about uh, how you can actually use this, uh, um, use this skills um, because you really need to practice a lot so that you can know how I can actually use it uh, in a, a better way. So here I want to introduce how you can, <clears throat> for example, let's draw a, a virus. So, <clears throat> so for me, this is just one design of virus uh, when I uh, need to create virus and uh, uh, some features that I want to recreate 
is uh, so for example they have this three-dimensional um, uh, main body for the virus and inside I can see the genetic materials of the virus and also they have the spike protein which are which is the three features that I wanted to recreate for my virus so how so when you dissect the virus although when combined together you can feel it's actually in three-dimensional but actually they all coming from the this two-dimensional uh, modules so in this section, I want to introduce you how you can actually use the shapes and the gradient uh, to create using the two-dimensional uh, components, but create a three-dimensional uh, um, effect. So, yeah, so the first uh, function is we need to create a main body. So the main body is actually just composed by this uh, uh, different uh, shapes. So uh, when you are designing uh, schematics, I, I think it's uh, helpful when you are thinking uh, of this um, to connect this uh, with some realistic examples. For example, if you wanted to have this see-through, that you wanted to have this small opening of the virus, and you so that you can oh, so that you can look through it to the inside. You can think of this as a watermelon, for example, that you have this two cuts so that you can have a small opening, and this small opening you can see what's inside. So here we wanted to see the genetic materials, for example. So then you need to know how I can actually uh, create these two cuts. It's actually the Boolean functions that I just mentioned. So here, <clears throat> it's just the theories, there are two different elliptical, uh, elliptical um, shape that when I do shape A and minus shape B, I will get, so it's in this, sorry. So it's in this, so when I do this shape A minus shape B, it's in this shape format. So after you can change the color of it, you can have the distinct color uh, between two uh, shapes and you can uh, have the similar method to create this uh, shapes so that you can have two cuts and also you have the inner materials after you align them, um, after you align them uh, here. It gives you the feeling of uh, you're opening up. So actually the shape, uh, the shape and the color of it uh, is really, really, uh, really, really matters uh, how three-dimensional it can be. So you can, uh, one example that I commonly uh, use is, for example, uh, if you are cutting a watermelon, you will see, so for example, here will be the darker green and here will be the two cuts will create two uh, lighter green because uh, you have this inner side of the watermelon peel. And also you have the uh, inner part will be the red. So you have to have this, uh, you have to have this color difference so that you can have the, uh, you can have the, uh, this feeling that um, opening is three dimensional. So you have to play around, uh, play, uh, play with this uh, colors and the shapes to make it uh, more uh, visualized, impressive. Yeah. So after you have the uh, the background of it, uh, so you wanted to create other uh, components of the virus, for example. So here I'm showing the uh, spike protein and the genetic materials and the nuclear uh, proteins. So for example, the spike protein that when you are looking when you uh, need to create a spike protein, you're definitely not going to find the, uh, the shape in this uh, regular shape panel because here is just very basic uh, regular shapes. However, what you can do is you can do the combination of the regular shapes. For example, here the spike protein is just composed uh, with uh, uh, circles and triangles and when you combine them together, it gives you a nice uh, spiky uh, protein structure. So one secret ingredient in making it more dynamic is add the effect, is to add the gradient effect. So here I wanted to introduce the use of a gradient instead of previously uh, we, uh, I introduced the, uh, the use of the shape. So here, if I do not have any, uh, so for example here, this two, the only difference is I have this circles is ingredient and the inner color is lighter and the outside color is darker. So by Doing this uh, by doing this gradient, it makes you feel that the spike protein is more three-dimensional. It's like the spike is uh, popping up. 
So this is just the function of this gradient. And um, uh, when you can, when you recreate this, you can imagine that you have a balloon, for example, before you're blowing them uh, up and it's like uh, a dark color. But when you are blowing up um, further and you will see the color is getting lighter and lighter and then it's more three dimensional. So the direction of the, the direction of the gradient is also really, really important. For example, here, why I have the light color inside and dark color outside, you can also imagine the balloon that uh, when you look very, very closely, you will notice that the top of the balloon is actually the lightest uh, compared to the side of the balloon and the bottom of the balloon. But this gives you the background why you are using the light color inside instead of light color outside. So this example is the light color outside and the, the dark color inside. So this, uh, I believe when you're looking at them, this, not, this, this example is not giving you uh, as dynamic as this one to like this three dimensional effect. So similar things is to this uh, for this nuclear proteins, for example, uh, if, you look, uh, if you look far away, you will feel this nuclear uh, proteins is actually three dimensional, but when you look closely, it's just a copy paste series of circles with gradients inside. And similarly, if you do not have any uh, gradient, you will feel uh, this shape module is really, really dead. When you put this behind the genetic materials, I believe the effect will not as tracking as this one. So I really recommend uh, you guys to use your imagination uh, in how you can actually uh, create a schematics and use some realistic examples to guide you uh, how I should add the gradient, why I should add the gradient, and uh, uh, what the direction should be. Yeah, so, Another example that I want to introduce is to uh, create uh, these cells. Um, <clears throat> I want to specifically introduce the use of these transparent blockers. So after you use, um, let me uh, recap, after you use a shape manual and you have this curve function that you create a curved uh, background of the cells. So when you, when you select this, uh, you, can change the, uh, you can change the color of it. So let's make, a, make it to be the gradient. So I commonly like the uh, color to be similar because I don't, but when you choose the same color or similar color, uh, the gradient is not obvious. So one thing you can do is to add the transparency of it so that your, uh, so that your um, gradient is more obvious to the readers. And um, so after you have the right color and the right gradient, and you can uh, use a similar, uh, similar functions to create other um, other uh, components, for example, the nucleus is also coming from this curve uh, function, but the only difference is I don't have the solid line because for the nucleus, uh, I, I like it to be no line, but I have this color difference so that uh, you can actually see the uh, nucleus as well. So after this, you actually create a very simple cells, but when you look closely, some of the papers that's why their cells are very, very uh, dynamic and very, very, um, a sophisticated design is actually they add those uh, modules that inside of the cells. So those modules um, are really uh, thing, uh, they they are just created from the uh, from the curve uh, function as well. But what these blockers can do is to make your uh, cells uh, more uh, sophisticated designed. But you want it to the you want you want this. Um, uh, modules to be really, really uh, transparent so that you can, uh, it's not easily detectable, but the other uh, functions of these modules is when you wanted to create an effect of, for example, the nanoparticles or the virus uh, is coming inside of the cells, uh, this extra layer can actually block part of the nanoparticles or virus so that uh, you have this filling of the virus or the nanoparticles is going inside. So this modules give you another, uh, <clears throat> to give you the uh, function of doing so. So when you are creating cells, so these modules are simply creating, uh, created by using this uh, curve uh, function. So they're very simple, but when you add these modules, it makes your uh, schematics more, uh, more sophisticated designed. 
Yeah, so <clears throat> yeah, so next example that I want to introduce is uh, syringes. So this is just one example, um, uh, uh, one example of my design of the syringes. So when you are uh, trying to create a schematic components, I suggest uh, you to really um, think of what kind of features that you wanted to recreate. For example, for the syringes, for me, uh, the feature that I want to recreate is the see-through functions that I want to look inside of the syringe and look at the liquid inside and the piston is pressing the liquid. So that's the three, uh, that's the two major functions that I, that I wanted to uh, recreate for my syringe. So how? So for the syringe body, uh, it's just a rectangle. So for example, uh, if I wanted to create this see-through functions, I have to have this inner color to be light and very, very transparent, very, very transparent, so that after, uh, so that when I put something behind it, I can actually, I can actually look through uh, this syringe bodies. So <clears throat> this is actually how you can uh, use the gradient and use the, um, use a gradient and use a transparent color to create the see-through functions. And also for the liquid, you need to uh, really need to use your imagination. So for the liquid inside, if I wanted to create this pressing functions, a uh, pressing of the liquid within the syringe, you can imagine that this part of the liquid should feel more pressure and maybe they're more concentrated because of this direction and because of this uh, the gravity. So this part will be more concentrated and feel more pressure. So how you can recreate this feature in by using the gradient is you just use a darker uh, darker color uh, on the bottom and the light color uh, in the in on the top. So that's how you are indicating here it's more concentrated and how you are uh, making make, when you are combining this together it makes your piston is pressing. And um, if you don't believe uh, this actually matter, so let's uh, change the direction of this liquid to the other way around. And when I put, now I put this uh, behind the syringe body, you can feel um, it's not as, you, you cannot feel the pressing, the liquid pressing functions of the syringe. So yeah, so that's how the direction of the gradient also really, really matter. And you have to use, use your imagination uh, to think how I should use uh, the scales that I know of to recreate some realistic features um, uh, for this component. <clears throat> yeah, so the next example that I want to introduce uh, is uh, to create the polymeric uh, nanoparticles. So uh, specifically, I will briefly introduce the use of the shadow, uh, which is one of the effects that uh, I mentioned. So for the nanoparticles, so this, for me, this is like a cow shell uh, nanoparticles. Um, you can load a, very, a variety of cargoes inside and you have the polymeric chain uh, outside. So, so for, for this, so again, this is just my design of uh, my thinking of nanoparticles. You can, uh, you can think of your own design. So, but it's actually very uh, simple. So, if I reverse what I do to this shape, it's just I add a color to it. Uh, if I just add a shadow to it. So if I make the size to be zero, it's just a circle. So this is just a circle uh, with a gradient fill inside. However, if I want to recreate uh, the shell, the polymeric shell, what I can do is to have this uh, in the right size. I can control how thick of my polymeric uh, shell and you can change the color. You can change the color of your polymeric shell. You can also uh, make it uh, less blur. And um, you definitely do not want it to have a distance because what you're trying to uh, create is a nanoparticle that are generally in symmetry. So, but maybe in other cases you can adjust the angle and you can uh, you can change the uh, direction of it. Um, you can change the direction of it. Um, so yeah, so basically that's how you can use the shadow uh, to create uh, a background of polymeric nanoparticles. And uh, uh, when you create this such thing, it's very simple, uh, but what you can do to make your uh, com component more uh, sophisticated designed is to add those uh, polymeric chain. 
for example, because you are um, creating polymeric nanoparticles, why not uh, use the curve structure that I mentioned to uh, align uh, this polymeric uh, curve structure uh, along with this uh, nanoparticles so that uh, when you look uh, when you look at distance, you feel this nanoparticle is more uh, sophisticated uh, designed. So sometimes you need to enrich uh, your schematic components uh, to involve different color, to involve different um, uh, to involve different effects, so that uh, it's more dynamic. Yeah. So the the other example that I want to introduce uh, is uh, to create some background. Uh, uh, specifically how we can use uh, the softer edges. So for example, here that I have um, created a polymeric uh, chain with some functional group. And after you know those, um, uh, you, you are master those skills, you can notice that I use this curve structure, I use a gradient line, and I use a Boolean function generated uh, antibodies. So although this individual component is actually good, however, it's just too simple and it's not one holistic uh, uh, schematics. So how you can enrich uh, this schematics is to create some background. So when you look closely, what I do to here is actually to add some colored um, background uh, behind this module. And you can, you can notice uh, what I do is just a series of circles and uh, uh, make it very, very transparent and make it very, very soft edges. And when I put this uh, module behind, you will actually feel, um, you will actually enrich uh, the schematics. And also you can notice, for example, here, because I use the red color, uh, so this red group, I have the red uh, blurry background behind and similar thing happens for the peptides or the antibodies uh, here. And also, uh, because this is a uh, because this is a polymeric chain, I am assuming that uh, you have a mixture of it, a solution of it. What you can do to enrich this schematics further is to add those polymeric chain uh, behind your major component. However, one thing that I really, really uh, wanted to emphasize is you wanted to make your background to be very, very transparent and to be very uh, nearly non-detectable because you don't want her to have a background that you don't want to compromise the reader's ability to, uh, to notice what you are trying to emphasize. So um, this is your major feature that you want people to uh, read instead of the supporting role of the background. And uh, the, other, the other thing uh, that I want to mention is I use this um, blockers. So sometimes, when you are creating some random structures, they're not normally in the uh, desired shape that you like. For example, um, uh, it's an irregular shape, but the schematics, we, con we constantly wanted to have a square-like uh, structure. So one thing you can do is to have some white uh, background color blockers. So, so I have the, these blockers on four sides so that I can have a nice uh, square uh, shape uh, schematics. But one thing I wanted to uh, emphasize is you can notice clearly that I actually use the rectangles with very, very soft edges. So the reason that I'm uh, doing so is personally, I like, uh, I don't like the schematics to be sharply end. So when you do this, when you have the soft edges, you will create um, this gradient fading away effect and for the uh, all the other ends, you do not have a sharply end. So this is just a, a small trick that make your um, make this uh, details um, uh, really really obvious. So <clears throat> yeah, so that's how you can actually use the soft edges uh, to create the uh, shape of the schematics and also create uh, the background uh, of the schematics to enrich. Uh, your original design to make it more um, acquisite. Yeah, so yeah, so lastly, I will talk about some caveats. So after uh, the previous two sections, uh, it's really about how you can uh, create individual uh, components. Um, but the import, so for, for example, sometimes you have a big theme schematics and sometimes you even have a, a, a more than one schematics in one paper. So what you can, uh, what you need to pay attention to 
is you need to coordinate your color and shape. You also need to coordinate the 2D and 3D or cartoon and real objects. So I will give two specific examples uh, here. So in terms of the color and shape coordination, so I refer to these images um, a lot. So when you look individual uh, images, you will feel that they are really, really good and really, really um, sophisticated designed. However, when you look closely, you, are, you will notice that these three figures are coming from three different papers. The reason is because the color and shape is not coordinated between among these figures, even though they are individually great. So for example, here the T-cells is this curvy uh, structure circles. However, the T-cells here is just two regular circles. So these small little things actually distinguish they are from different papers. And also you can notice that uh, here this figure is trying to distinguish between the virus and the T, the immune cell population. Because you notice all the immune cells are in a similar uh, color of this gray uh, color. However, here uh, they, they are trying to distinguish among uh, T cell populations. So they have neutrophils in purple, but the other T cells uh, in green, for example. So that's how you, when you're designing your schematics, you really need to think of uh, what you're trying to emphasize and what, which components and color you will use because you don't want her to uh, confuse the readers and you, you don't want her to have a non-coordinated uh, schematics uh, in one paper. Yeah, so the other, the other examples uh, that I wanna share is this cartoon and real objects coordination. So when, you, uh, so when you look at uh, the figure, it's really cartoon-like. Uh, so the schematics is really to um, uh, let the general public audience to understand the signs. So sometimes we use a very, very cartoon-like um, schematics uh, to facilitate more uh, readers. So I believe there are people that have the higher skills of using some modeling or three-dimensional modeling software that can create the uh, replicate of the real objects. However, um, when you take more time to do so, when you put a real, uh, maybe it take more time to create this uh, modules, but when you put it here, it's actually not fit into the general uh, cartoon-like schematics, even though this module may take you um, uh, more time uh, than other uh, schematics combined, but when you put this inside, it's just not fit. So why not just uh, save some time and uh, to save some time to create a schematics uh, that uh, is really a coordinate uh, together. Yeah, so this part is really when after you have all this uh, individual component and using the uh, uh, skills that I have mentioned in previous two sections, um, how you uh, need to coordinate uh, in terms of the color, in terms of the shape, um, and in terms of the uh, cartoon uh, 2D or 3D, this object's coordination. So yeah, so that's basically uh, the techniques that I wanna share. Uh, for today's seminar. So now I believe that you can actually uh, recreate uh, these figures. So most people can look, but they don't see. They don't see the difference or the details behind uh, the schematics and how this um, sophisticated designed uh, figures can actually be recreated using the techniques, uh, simple techniques that I introduced today. So for example, here the dendritic, the dendritic cells, they just created uh, they just created from the curved uh, functions um, that I mentioned, and you can notice clearly that they have this uh, small modules, bubbles, transparent blockers, even in the nucleus, and also they have these transparent blockers uh, that create the effect of the virus is going inside of the dend dendritic cells. And also you can, even this small little even this small little peptides, you can uh, see that they have a light color um, uh, component there. Um, when you look far away, you feel that uh, it's popping up, but simply it just, uh, it's just, a, it's just a, a, a light color uh, dot. And also um, the, the small, this small uh, arrows, they are using gradient arrows. 
So what you can do is after you create a solid errors, you can use the gradient blockers as I mentioned, so that you can create a, a gradient errors. And also those, all these bubbles, when you look closely, they're just circles. So also similar thing here, when you look at these receptors, you, want, you will feel that maybe this is so irregular that you are never gonna find uh, the regular shape, uh, the shape uh, in this shape panel. But you, what you can do is to um, do a series of um, Boolean function of the shape so that you can uh, uh, replicate uh, a complicated re receptor at an irregular shape. And also you can notice this Kurma block um, they actually have this red color shadow to indicating that uh, this is uh, during the inflammation. So all this uh, small little uh, effects add up to make you uh, feel that this uh, schematics are actually in, uh, very impressive and good. And also what you can notice that there are really, uh, most of them are actually in two dimensional. So that's also the advantage of using the PowerPoint because PowerPoint is really powerful in creating two dimensional uh, components. And uh, if you look more closely, you will find actually 99% um, of these modules actually have the gradient. So, so when you don't know if you should use a gradient or not, you uh, you can try to use a gradient and uh, play with the gradient and play with uh, the direction of it, the color of it, and then you will be able to recreate these uh, figures. Yeah, so uh, with that, I really wanted to acknowledge uh, all the lab members uh, during past uh, two years during my master's study at UCLA, and especially I want to uh, thank Dr. Uh, Ali Kalimhosini for his constant support uh, from the very beginning. And I also wanted to thank uh, Dr. Wu Jingsun uh, for his uh, help and guidance along the way. So without practice and um, his constant higher uh, standard, I cannot um, have the ability to create the schematics uh, today. But I also believe that with the practice, uh, with practicing more, um, we can make progress uh, together in creating better schematics. Yeah, so with that, I wanted to take uh, any questions that we may have uh, from the audience. Hi, Xingwu. Uh, so I'm reading the, the questions that people put in the chat. Mm -hmm. So one question is, how can we create mice? Oh, actually, so reasons I actually create a, a peak from the, um, so I will add another. So what you can do is really, um, you have different style uh, of the uh, schematics. So one thing that I really recommend doing is using this, um, is using this uh, curved uh, structures uh, that, but you definitely need to uh, be more, uh, be more, uh, how to say, the, uh, familiar with this structure. You need to practice more so that you can, uh, you can create a mouse shape or the pig shape. I will, I can actually share one of the... I think what Dean was making. Yeah, I can share one of this. So, oh, I'm not here. So, yeah, so definitely play with a, a curved structure and you can, uh, because there are, you, you do not have to have a, a real uh, mouse and you just have to have a similar shape. And you also you can have this, um, uh, for example, this, this shape is really uh, like the mouse body and that's how you can change it uh, to be a mouse that you like. Again, it's really a combination of different shapes. Uh, so other questions are, why not use Illustrator or uh, BioRender? Yeah, so yeah, I mentioned uh, that I personally, I'm familiar with the uh, uh, PowerPoint. I mean, if you are familiar with Illustrator or BioRender or whatever soft software, I believe they are more sophisticated and any effect that I'm talking about will be transferable. Uh, and I believe they may have uh, more functions. Um, that PowerPoint doesn't have. But if you can, uh, if I am able to uh, create the schematics that uh, 
uh, to the level that I'm satisfied with, why not use a simple uh, software instead of some uh, other um, other more uh, uh, that's more challenge to use one? Yeah. Two questions. One is how do we control the resolution of the saved images and how to increase the resolution of these images? Oh, so I don't know if they have, so the PowerPoint has this uh, that you can control the resolution, but what I do is after I create the, after I create, for example, uh, this, uh, in, uh, this, uh, this images, what I do, I take the screenshot of it and I will put them into the uh, Photoshop and to make it resolution, whatever you want. But actually, um, um, after I do the screenshot, it's actually pretty resolute and to uh, satisfy with the most uh, requirements of the most journals. But if you wanted to have a bigger figure or cover figure, then probably you need to have the higher resolution that you can simply change it in the uh, Photoshop, yeah. And another question is, how do we make uh, figures from 2D to 3D? Um, yeah, so that's one thing that uh, I didn't mention. So um, PowerPoint is really uh, is really powerful in creating uh, two-dimensional uh, images or components. So they have some um, they have some very very basic uh, uh, very very basic three-dimensional uh, modules. But for me, uh, I don't like to use them because they are just not in the right direction. But recently, I noticed that they actually have when you double click in the second polygon uh, functions, you can actually change the, so in the 3D rotation uh, function, you can actually change uh, the direction of it. Uh, for example, I can do uh, this so that, because uh, sometimes when I do, uh, do, for example, the macro needle patch, it's really a challenge to uh, change the direction of it. So yeah, so PowerPoint is really not, uh, at, at least for me, I'm not really familiar with creating three-dimensional modules. So that's what, so, but 99% of the time, I can use uh, uh, the, the techniques that I mentioned to uh, make the three-dimensional effect from two-dimensional components. But sometimes you, if you have to use some uh, three-dimensional uh, components, what you can do is to have some very simple uh, three-dimensional software ready uh, to facilitate, to draw some components so that you can add them to the PowerPoint uh, afterwards, yeah. Um, can you tell something about grouping structures? How can we handle multiple structures? Yeah, so the grouping, uh, the, the grouping functions is actually in uh, here, for example, uh, if you wanted to group this uh, two figure together, uh, what you can do is you can select both of the figures and then uh, in this um, tools, in this tools, um, you have to, in this arrange uh, section, you have the group uh, function and then it becomes a, uh, a whole shape. Uh, so that's how uh, grouping work. It's basically in this arrange. And in this arrange, I also commonly use, for example, bring to, uh, bring, bring to front or send to back, because for example, for the, uh, for the cells here, you definitely, if you wanted to create this, um, uh, this shape is on top of this nanoparticles. What you can do is you definitely need to have this module on top of the nanoparticles. So it's also in this uh, arrange, uh, arrange panel that you can change the, uh, how to layer them. And you can also ungroup them, for example, here. I'm ungrouping them, yeah. What's the best way to save these images? To save these images? Yeah, yes. after creating them, EPS format or some other. Yeah, so personally, I, I do not have very advanced way. I just, if I, for example, if I wanted to use this image uh, in some papers, I will just screenshot them and uh, take a, uh, and then it becomes an image file. It, you can change it to PNG or JPEG or whatever format you like. And again, you can use the PS to change the resolution of it. Yeah. Okay. Also, how did you uh, learn? They're saying, do you suggest some sites or videos to further learn more? Uh, like the like the record some videos? No, no. Like, how did you become an expert in drawing these good figures? Is there like a handbook or some video, YouTube video, or some uh, sites? Um, so the the PowerPoint is really an actually no. 
So personally, I'm recently learning the Blender. So for the, again, so for those advanced technology, you probably need the YouTuber too. But for the PowerPoint, it's really, again, it's really simple. And you can, so what I learned is by mimicking. So when I look at these figures, I enlarge them and I see how the details they are creating. For example, how, why this cells is look so different from the cells that I initially uh, designed is because this uh, bubbles. And then you, your question will be, how can, can I create the bubbles in this um, software, in this PowerPoint? And the answer is yes. So that's how I think and how I uh, learn the PowerPoint uh, to fulfill my uh, requirement of generating this. And again, I don't think this is the only way. And I also don't believe that the, uh, the people behind these figures are using the PowerPoint, but um, that's how I can recreate. Yeah. Another question is, um, could you explain a bit more about adding background, especially color effects? Yeah, so for example, yeah, so the reason of me adding the background is um, when I initially created these components, I feel this is really dull and uh, just uh, singular. So what I want to do is to uh, make it just more diverse and make to enrich some more components. Then, um, but the other way is I don't want to compromise people's uh, because that's something that I'm trying to uh, emphasize. So one thing that I'm thinking is to create some background. So uh, so what then the question will be uh, what background you wanted to create. So. Um, um, so this really requires some artistic uh, uh, feeling that um, oh, so uh, the technology is really, really simple. So because here the techniques is just a circles. So if I make it back, it's just uh, if I make the transparency less uh, obvious, you will see it's like this. You can see that it's just a blue uh, circles. If I further reverse this, for example, I make the soft edges. So it's actually this small little background is coming from this. Uh, uh, it's coming from this circles, this elliptical shape. But after you add the soft edges to a very very uh, exaggerated point, and to add the transparency of it, you will get to this. And then when you combine them together, it gives you a virulent, more impressive feeling. So that's how you need to, you know, when you know the techniques, you really need to develop a, an artistic uh, feeling um, uh, of when should, uh, why should I use that and when should I use that? Yeah. Um, well, with this, uh, that's all the questions. It was a great talk. Everybody is congratulating you for this nice talk, Shingwo. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yeah, thank you um, so much for... Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone for uh, attending our fireside chat.